Welcome to Rona's Academy. Let's first look at the question under the current tax. So from the question on the screen, we were told that the estimated income tax liability for the period of 2018, that is at the end of 2018, is 180. So in 2018, they estimated that their tax, their income tax liability is going to be 180. And then in the previous year, which was in 20. 17 they estimated that they are that, that was what they actually accounted for in the books of 2017 that their tax liability is going to be 150 um dollars then the question continued to tell us that what we should calculate the tax charge that will be shown in the statement of what profit or loss for the year ended december 2008 if that was actually agreed and settled with the tax authority, so in 2017, you know, we spent, we are, they are paying two amounts. We are going to provide two tax, looking at the under provision and then the over provision. So they said, A, if they paid $165 in 2018, and then B, if they paid $140. So the question is basically informing us that. This is the estimated value in 2018, and this is what they estimated and they have accounted for in 2017. Now, assuming that in 2018 they made payment for tax with this amount and they also made payment with this under these two categories, what will be your tax liability in the books of the entity in 2018 December? That is what they are asking you for under these two um, scenarios. So now let's look at how under provision and then over provisions are accounted for. So in so let's do our workings here. We have accounted for one fifty dollars tax in twenty seventeen. But what did we actually pay? This is what we deducted as an expense. But this is what we actually paid. If that is the case, then we have what under prov provided for tax. There was an under provision. Remember, anytime there's an under provision, we have to go and increase the new tax, you know, element with the differences that is arising. Because we have already accounted for this expense and we pay this. So the difference here is going to be the 165 minus 150, which was going to give us $15. $15. Because it is what? Under provision. Look at we have paid more than what we have provided for. So it is what? Under provision. So if that is the case. Then in 2018, under the first scenario, our tax liability, our tax liability is going to be the $180 plus 15, which is going to give us $195. So in the P or L account, that is going to be extract for that matter. So we have our dollar sign here. So we are going to have tax liability, the tax liability for 20. 18 so 2018 is going to be 195 dollars 195 dollars the reason is because there was what under provision now let's look at the second scenario so this is the a part and let's look at the b scenario assuming that the actual size that they paid was what was 140 they provided for 150 but the actual time that they paid was what was 140 though this is over provision we have taken this amount from our profits. This has reduced our profit. But this is the actual expenses we are supposed to have less. So this is what? Over provision. If that is the case, this has to reduce our tax element in the next period. But if it is under provision, it has to increase our tax in the next period. So in this case, the difference is going to be 150 minus 140, which is going to be 10. But this term is going to reduce our tax element because we have made over what? Over provision. So in this case, in 2018, our tax under the second scenario, our tax liability, tax liability is going to be the 180 that we have incurred, or we estimated in 2018, which is the 180 minus the 10, which is going to give us 170 dollars. So please, this under current. You know tax so current tax always take into consideration the um adjustment of over provision and then under provision
All right, so let's look at the second scenario as predicted on the screen. We were told that the entity makes a profit of a profit of one thousand one thousand dollars in the next three years. So year one, year two, year three. The entity is making um, one thousand dollars profit in the three years. We also told that this profit is as a result of a fixed asset that they bought that was six hundred and then. The, um, they depreciated it over the useful life of three years. That means their depreciation is going to be 200 for each year. So 200 dollars for each year. 200 dollars for each year. So this is year one. So this is year one, year two, year three. We are also told that the tax authorities made capital allowance. So they made provision for you know depreciation. So this is where the issue comes. You see, the entity has already deducted some of the things from their um, you know, gross profit to arrive at their accounting profit. But it's not the right thing. According to the task law, that is not what they are supposed to work less. So the task authorities has provided them with what the allowances they are supposed to, work to, deduct, to deduct. We are told that the, in the year one is 240, year two is 210, and then year three is what, 150. The questions are to the set first, which would ignore the fair tax. What amount of tax are they supposed to account for in the P or L account, profit or loss account, and other comprehensive income? So let's take the first scenario where we ignore the fair tax. Now, when a time we are given a profit, you know that we have already less the depreciation from it. We need to attach that and then effect the capital allowance, the right amount the tax authorities has given us. So in this case, the profit in year one was one thousand dollars. Year two was the same one thousand dollars, and then this one was also one thousand dollars. Remember that we less depreciation from the figure to get this profit, so we have to add back our depreciation. So in this case, we are going to add back our depreciation of two hundred each, two hundred in each case. Then. We will less the capital allowance or what the tax authorities have given us. So in this case, we have the capital allowance. Capital allowance to be in year one is 240. And then in year two is going to be um, 210. And then in year three is one um, is, is 150. Remember, we are lessing these figures. Here we are letting these figures here. So let's you add this to this and we less this, and it's going to give us this is going to give us 960, and then this is going to give us 990 dollars, and this is going to give us 1050 dollars. So this is anytime we have done this adjustment, this is what we call taxable profit. Taxable profit. So from here we can charge our um tax rate on it in the question we're giving the tax rate to be 30 percent so in 30 percent tax so 30 percent of this will give us 288 um, you know dollars and then 30 percent of this will give us 297 dollars and 30 percent of this will give us 315 dollars so this will be the tax charge for the um, period in a case we are ignoring deferred Tax. So that is the first example. So when you go to our P or L, P or L extract, so remember that when you want to prepare your P or L extract, then we are going to have year one, year two, and year three. Remember, this is going to be the profit, you know, before tax. So profit, profit before tax is going to be the same. The same year. So we, here, you remember that we are ignoring the factors. In a case, we are going to consider the factors. That will be the scenario two. We have to add our defectors, whatever we get, to the current tax before we can release it from our profits. So the tax in this case, because we are ignoring the factors, is going to be the two eight eight that we have calculated here, and then two nine seven that we have here, and then also the three one five um, dollars we have here. And when we learn this one from this, remember this is a tax, so it's going to be an expense. So when we learn this one from this, we are going to get what we call the taxable. Sorry, this we have done it. This is going to give us profit after tax.
profit after tax. Now let's look at the second scenario. In a situation where the deferred tax is supposed to be considered, remember that anytime we are dealing with the deferred tax, we need to look for our temporary difference. And then the temporary difference will give us whether we are having a deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability, whether we are having taxable temporary difference or deductible temporary difference. All right, so moving forward to the second scenario where deferred tax is considered. Now, in this case, deferred tax is considered. So how will you, what will be the amount of your tax that the entity is supposed to account for? So in this case, we are supposed to look for our current amount of the assets in year one, current amount of the assets in year two, and the current amount of the assets in year, what, in year three. And you also look at our tax base in year one, tax base in year two, and tax base in, what, in year three. So in year one, the current amount of the asset is basically going to be the 600. So this is, a, this is our current amount and this is going to be our task base. So the current amount of the asset in um, year one is going to be 600 minus 200. And this is going to give us 400. This is the current amount. And then our task base is going to be the 600, you know, minus 240. Because that was the capital allowance we were given. That was the... The allowance we're given and this is going to give us 360 this is going to give us 360 here in year one so this is our current amount and this is about our um tax base look at this the current amount is greater than the tax base so this is going to give us taxable temporary difference so in this case our temporary difference is going to be the taxable temporary difference for this one and this is going to be what 40. So this is what we are going to charge our percentage on. So we charge our 30% on this. And this is going to give us 12 dollars. So our tax in year one is going to be what? 12 dollars. That is going to be a deferred tax. 12 dollars. Let's come to um, year two. Year two, our current amount is going to be 600 minus 400. And this is going to give us 200. Remember, this is going to give us 200 because we have already um, used the asset for two years, accumulated depreciation. And then when we come here to, it's going to be the 600 minus accumulated allowance. And accumulated allowance is going to be 240 minus 2 what, 210. Please don't forget, also accumulated, you know, um, uh, allowance. And this is going to give us 150. Again, the difference here is going to be 50. Is 50 so we charge our 30 percent on the 50 30 percent on the 50 is going to give us 15 year 15 dollars but because it's a deferred you know tax this amount 12 is included in this 15 because it's, we have deferred this 12 here so this 12 is included in this 15 so here the only tax you account for is going to be what three because they are less than this 12 from this one and you are going to get what three which means that this 12 is embedded in this one so in the next accounting period this 15 is supposed to be transferred to the third year so in the third year our current amount is going to be zero because it's going to be 600 minus 600 and then when we come here to our tax base is also going to be zero so 600 minus one minus 240 minus 210 minus 150 tax allowance is also going to give us zero that is going to be the in the year three then what to be the task in the year three is going to be what negative 15. negative 15 because the assets we are disposing the asset off and therefore we are supposed to also write off the tax why 15 because remember we are going to defer the tax into this place but this place is zero the asset has been exhausted so we are deferring the assets and it's supposed to be negative remember negative tax so in this case, we are probably getting what we call the tax assets. By these two scenarios, we are getting what we call the tax liability. So this is a deferred tax in year one, the deferred tax in year two, and this is a deferred tax in year three. Now we have to add them to the tax that we have already have for the current tax before we account for them. So in this case, when we go to our P or L account, this is going to be an extract for that matter. Extracts. And then we have our year one, year, year two, and then year three. Our tax liability, tax liability. Remember that the profit was one thousand. 
for each period so the profit before tax profit before before tax was 1000 for each period 1000 year and then 1000 year so now our tax liability is going to be the first one is going to be the 288 plus the 12 which is going to give us 300 so we are going to less our tax liability of 300 in the year one now year two is going to be the 297 um, plus three and this is also going to be give us 300 and then in year three is going to give us a 315 sorry 315 plus into bracket negative 15 and this is also going to give us 300 uh, tax please remember that the reason why this place is negative is because we are deferring the tax we are deferring that's why this place this 12 is embedded here because we have deferred it it is embedded here so we have to take it from it so that we can get the actual tax value in year two in this place the tax is zero and we are supposed to defer it to the next year because the tax is zero over here and if you are deferring it because the tax is zero we are so we are supposed to make a recoverable but not to make effort a payment of tax that is why this place is what is negative so at the end of the two scenarios we see first we are dealing with only the current tax and the current tax was given at this value but now that we are adding the deferred tax to it we are getting 300 years 300 years so this is about the computation of um, deferred tax how to get the deferred tax asset and then deferred tax liability and add it to your um, tax current tax to get the tax for the period um thank you